Good morning, and thanks for coming. As you mentioned, my name is Daniel Resikoff. I'm the co-founder of Acceleron. <clears throat> We're based here in the Bay Area, and we sit at the intersection of computer vision, machine learning, and ophthalmic imaging. Our goal is to combine these disciplines to build tools to help physicians improve lives. In general, the emphasis in AI has been on replicating human performance, whether it's ImageNet, self-driving cars, or my personal favorite, hot dog, not a hot dog. Now, now these, are, these are all tasks human, uh, humans are already good at, and traditionally machines haven't been. But deep learning with convolutional neural nets has changed all that, and we're in a very exciting time now where AI is nearly everywhere. Healthcare is no exception, and in particular in ophthalmology, we've seen the first ever FDA-approved autonomous AI system uh, released by IDX last year. Now, IDX is still basically doing something physicians are already good at. At Voxeleron, the question we're asking is, what can we do with these images that physicians can't? To tackle this problem, it helps to understand a little bit more about what's going on under the hood. In general, the narrative with CNNs has been uh, that they take low-level features and build them up to high-level structures. So on the left, they characterize it as edges to uh, parts to objects, and on the right, it's textures to features to faces. So there's truth to this, but it's a little bit misleading because what these CNNs are doing is not perceiving structure and shape the way we are. They're really responding to textures. Now here's a paper demonstrating CNN's inherent bias to texture. On the left are two images where we agree with the CNN. On the right, though, we see an image that clearly has cat shape and cat structure, but it's misclassified because it's made from elephant texture. Here are two more examples of showing how sensitive CNNs are to texture. In both cases, just inserting very subtle textures to the image causes otherwise strong classifiers to fail. In one case, the banana becomes a toaster, and in the other case, the stop sign's missed entirely. CNNs are so good at texture, they're actually better than us. So here on the left, we see images where we agree with the CNN. On the right, though, are images where the structure has been, com they've been scrambled, and the structure is completely gone, but the texture remains. And impressively, the CNNs actually do a great job with these too. So let's take advantage of this. Let's apply this to problems involving subtle textures that humans have a hard time recognizing. And that brings us to the main point, AI and ophthalmology. So first, a little bit of background. Age-related macular degeneration, or AMD, is the leading cause of vision loss for Americans over the age of 50. Uh, currently, ophthalm ophthalmologists use optical coherence tomography, or OCD, OCT, to generate 3D images of the retina to diagnose and monitor this disease. It has two main stages. There's an early dry stage and an advanced wet stage where the vision loss occurs. Currently, though, we have no way of knowing which patients will go from the dry stage to convert to the wet stage, and which won't. Our best guess is there are subtle textures in these images that we, uh, <clears throat> that we can't see that will indicate which patients will convert. This is exactly the kind of problem that CNNs are great at, and humans aren't as. So we designed a retrospective study where we followed a set cohort of patients over two years, a cohort of patients with dry AMD over two years. Some converted, some didn't, we trained a classifier in the baseline images to see if we could determine which ones would convert and which ones wouldn't. We added a proprietary normalization step to focus the classifier specifically on the region of interest. And we did our training with our Dell Precision Workstation and three NVIDIA GV100s. This gave us the speed and flexibility to try thousands of different model architectures until we arrived at the best one. And the results were pretty striking. We had a strong predictive power for AMD compression AMD progression, and this is a great example of a problem that doctors simply can't do now. And maybe more importantly, when we asked the classifier where it was looking to make its decision, it indicated this region just below the retina called the choroid, which dovetails very nicely with a growing body of literature suggesting that there are indeed subclinical indications of disease in exactly this region. In the future, we're planning on validating this, or we're currently working on validating this on a larger data set, and we're working on a number of other projects involved in ophthalmology. Thanks for your time.